let's uh, I want to talk about something this name I feel like comes up in trade speculation at least the last three years I feel like it's that time of year again when we talk about Chris Bryant and whether or not the Cubs are going to be moving on from Chris Bryant he got a pinch hit at bat last night and really hasn't played much in the last two games uh, what do you make of all this and is there any chance that the that the Phillies are at least kicking the tires right now on Chris Bryant I think it's a little too early to kick the tires and I wrote about this this week um, which I'm thankful I did because he got hit in the hand uh, yet yesterday. So he left the game with a hand injury and I'm like, wow, you know, that story would have been dead if I didn't write that two days ago. So I'm glad I got that out. I wrote <laughs> but it seems like he is fine. Just a contusion. Um, I'm sure they'll be careful with him since he is obviously not only is, is he the best hitter in baseball right, in the national league right now, but he's also a huge trade chip for them right now. And I, I think the Cubs, the Cubs are around 500. Um, they weren't expecting to win this season. They're in the start of a really significant rebuild, just like they went, you know, five, six years ago to win a World Series. They had a significant rebuild before that. They're doing it again. Chris Bryant, last year of his contract, he's going to get traded. It's, it's going to happen. Usually these trades happen in July at the trade deadline. These teams, when they have these guys, they want to wait to get the best offer. They want to get all the teams that want to get involved into it. You're not going to trade them away in May or June when you can wait till July and get the best offer for you. And the Phillies have a need in center field. I know we talked about Oduble, but I don't know if Oduble is the answer. Especially he's not Chris Bryant, and Chris Bryant is a third baseman who's playing center field right now. Looks pretty good playing center field. Um, grew up with Bryce Harper, so you got that narrative to it. But to me, the most important thing is that the Phillies have Dave Dombrowski. And Dave Dombrowski, in the course of his career, every stop he's went, he knew when it was time to, to push in, you know, push the chips in and go all in and to make that move, to make that Chris Bryant trade. He did it in Boston. He did it in Miami. I mean, in Florida, you know, he's done it where in Detroit. He, he, did, he did it in Montreal even. He traded Randy Johnson away. But this is the mindset that you need to be a successful baseball executive. He traded Randy Johnson away from Montreal after 10 major league starts awful trade right you traded away a hall of famer he said no I, the guy we got back was the best pitcher in baseball that year and and helped us so we had an owner that wanted to win right now so yeah that that's the mindset you need that you like you, it's like being a closer where you might make a deal but you know you, you're not going to be afraid to make the next one and i think that's what dave dombrowski has he's not afraid to trade prospects he knows just like ruben amaro did he knew how to trade the right prospects to trade the prospects that aren't going to come back to bite you which you know, if you look at those Phillies trades, not a lot of those trades came back to bite them. And I think that's what the Phillies have in Dave Dombrowski. I'm not saying they're going to trade for Chris Bryant, but it just seems like it's in play, at least, that they're going to – if tra Chris Bryant's on the market like I expect him to be this summer, the Phillies are going to be in, in one of those teams that are at least in talks, I, I, I would assume, for him. All right, so you mentioned the chips, the push all the chips in the middle of the table. The question for me is then what chips do the Phillies have right now? Because we just talked about Scott Kingery being here out of necessity. Nobody else banging down the door to get to the major league level. So what do you think the Phillies have that would be on the table in form of those chips? So Chris Bryant, like you said, is you know on the market every year. He was on the market last spring training, but that's when he had two years left of control. So th the price for him was expensive. Now the price comes down because you're going to get him really for – july august september three months so the price is still going to be expensive because he's still chris bryant but it's not going to be what it was a year and a half ago and what i point to is manny machado is probably you know the best comparable player recent memory top tier premium talent getting traded at the deadline what did the orioles get they got a group of prospects from the dodgers and the best one was i think the ranked 77th by baseball america so it wasn't even Dodgers' top prospect. It was like the Dodgers' fifth or sixth best prospect at the time was the headliner of the deal, a double A or low A outfielder. Um, that's like the, the, you don't – teams – like the people are emailing me like, you can't trade away the prospects for Chris Bryant. It's like they're not going to trade the farm. Like that's not what it's going to cost. It's going to cost a significant prospect. It's going to be someone we know. Bryson but, Stott? I, I, I don't even know. I don't even want to okay. throw like – but it's not going to be – Mick Abel, Bryson Stott, and, you know, Rojas. And, you right, know, right, three right. guys where it's like, oh, my God, we gave up the farm for a rental. It's like, no, like the Phillies could have got Manny Machado three years ago or two years ago by not giving up the farm, by giving up, you know, the equivalent to what the Dodgers gave up. 
And maybe they made the playoffs that year. And is that worth it? I think it is because I think you have to have one eye on the future, but you also have to live in the present. And you have to eventually say, everyone's like, you know, you got to save for the future. It's like, well, eventually you have to make the playoffs. I'm not saying you're going to sell 2021, 2022 away to make it to win in 2021, but you have to find a way to win in 2021 and also win in 2022 and 23. And if that's getting Chris Bryant, but also giving up one of your, you know, one of your top six prospects, uh, I think, I think that would be worth it. 